the top scientist interlaced with the UN climate study group, and you also study them individually. They're all globalists. They're all pro New World Order. They're all socialist. They all want to cut human resources. They all want one child policies. This is a very sick group, and studying them separate from the climate debate, studying them, being persecuted by them. You're one of the first people they, they singled out because as a top climatologist, you were effectively countering them. What type of individuals are these people? Well, as, as you said, uh, and, and by the way, the, the University of East Anglia, where the CRU is located, and I had the privilege of, of dealing with uh, Hubert Lamb, who's the father of climatology uh, of the modern era. Um, I, he, he helped me with my doctoral thesis. I mean, he'd be turning in his grave. But um, the, this, this, it was set up there. The University of East Anglia, which, by the way, has been complicit in blocking freedom of information requests, as has the United Kingdom Met Office. So this thing permeates through government. But the University of East Anglia was set up under the Harold Wilson socialist government in Britain, and it is considered the the most left of all the left-wing universities in Britain. So this was a perfect uh, place for this CRU thing uh, to fester into what it has become. And, of course, the person that uh, – there's two sides to it, of course. There's the political side and, and, and the science side. Now, um, the guy that brought put those two together is our old friend Morris Strong. And, of course, Morris Strong, I think, is hiding out in China right now because the U.S. government want him for his involvement with Kofi Annan in the oil for food in Iraq thing. But Morris Strong was the one uh, that uh, set up the United Nations Environment Program. And he made a statement 30 years ago uh, that he said, isn't the problem for the or the problem for the planet are the industrialized nations. Isn't it our responsibility to get rid of them? And I want your audience to think about how would you do that? If you consider the industrialized nations like uh, an engine in a car, and that's a very good analogy because fossil fuels and energy are, are critical to them, how would you how would you go about doing that? You'd say, okay, I can stop the engine by setting off the energy supply, and uh, th as you see that happening and the the impacts on energy, but but the public would scream right away. We saw that with the, when the fuel prices went up, everybody's angry immediately. So you, you really can't do that. But if you say, look, the byproduct, the exhaust of this engine, and you can stop an engine by plugging the exhaust. So if you say, look, the exhaust uh, of this industrialized nations or this car is CO2, and it's destroying the global climate and destroying the planet, then you can point at, oh, this evil industry, this horrible uh, in, uh, industrial complex, and this whole free market thing, um, we, we've just got to shut it down. It's destroying the planet. That's why CO2 became the focus, even though it's an absolute minuscule part of the total uh, complexity to the, that is weather and climate. And, and of course, Morris Strong um, set about to do this. Now, in a book called The Cloak of Green by Elaine Dewar, who, by the way, started to write a book praising all the environmentalists in Canada, and as a good journalist, the more she dug, the more she discovered that these people were more corrupt than the uh, co corporations they were attacking. And 20% uh, of that book is devoted to Strong. And she said to him, if you've got these ideas, why don't you run for politics? He probably, the only honest statement in his life, said, well, you can't do anything as a politician. He said, I'm going to go to the U.N., and there I can get all the money I want and not be accountable to anybody. And that's precisely what he did. He set up with Kofi Annan, and he became the senior advisor, and uh, he set up the United Nations Environment Program, and a subset of that was the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now, one of the things, uh, Alex, that uh, to help people understand how these sorts of machinations are done, because Strong was in incredibly – I mean, it's like with Gore's movie. You cannot deny it's a superb piece of propaganda. And with Morris Strong, you cannot deny his talents in persuading people and managing bureaucratic systems. And one of the things through my own experience, I've chaired many boards of commission and commissions of inquiry. And um, you, you, the, it's a perfect vehicle for the politician because, the, you know, there's a, there's a fight going on and the public are saying, why don't you do something here? Well, the politician said, okay, we'll, we'll have a commission inquiry, and it'll be arm's length. 
And everybody say, oh, good for you. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Uh, but what they don't know is that the politicians continue to retain control. Now, first of all, if the, if the media come along... Oh, well, stay there, on. stay there, stay there. Obviously, government funding over institutions, they don't get the funding if they don't give the results that the U.N. wants. We'll be right back with climatologist Dr. Tim Ball. This is incredible news. Until they run out, you get a free Obama Joker T-shirt. With, and there's four different messages on them. You can pick the T-shirt you want free when you order one copy. I just want to get this film out. People are ready to hear. This film is about the banks, how the elites engineered the climate change fraud for the global tax. And now we have Von Rumpy, the head of the EU, and saying this. We have Al Gore and others saying it in the film. Everyone's got to see this. So you want to know about the climate fraud, what's really going on? These are not scientists and the U.N. just screwing up on accident. This is premeditated. Uh, going back to Dr. Tim Ball, this is a short segment. Sir, yeah. I just want to stress that we can't let this go by the wayside. They've been caught in so many other frauds, but yeah. again, they could say that was an accident. This is red-handed, and you were telling me during the break, this goes, the tentacles of this go into all of government and the entire power structure, and they're not going to quit just because this fraud came out unless we really get this message out. That's why we're seeing... A huge broadcast TV blackout on this. Oh, absolutely. As I said, the atomic bomb went off, and most of the mainstream media didn't hear it. But just a quick kudos to you, Alex, um, the, the uh, YouTube nine-minute video. Your grasp of, of the, the issues in this is, is really remarkable, and that's been one of the problems because most of the media are not scientists, and um, one of the things with the the public is, is they're going to have to need uh, a lot of these emails explained. What are they saying? What's the context of this? And, of course, it's why some of the attempts to block what's, uh, what's out there is saying, oh, they're taking it out of context. And they can get away with that, but uh, the minute uh, somebody like myself that knows what's going on, watched it go on, put it in context, it just becomes even more explosive. So, um, yeah, absolutely. And by the way, just back quickly, I was talking about terms of reference. In my own experience, um, uh, Mar Strong wrote the terms of reference for the IPCC. And uh, as I said, when I chaired uh, commissions of inquiry, and your audience can think about the Kennedy Commission, and they asked Judge Warren about, well, why didn't you look at the ma Mafia and Dallas Connection? He said, oh, it wasn't in my terms of reference. That's how the politicians control. And the first commission I was given, the minister gave me the terms of reference, and I said, Mr. Minister, I can't even begin to look at this, let alone reach some conclusions. And he said, well, that's the way it is. And I said, no, here's the way it is. I'm going to go to the media and say, you're tying my hands on this issue. Well, he obviously decided that that was a bigger problem than trying to tie Okay, go hands. back, explain to people uh, what yeah. minister in the context, because you're talking about lying by omission. They set the parameters of the debate. They yep. say climate change is real. It is bad. It is man-made. And right. they say the debate is settled. Yeah, okay, because what, what uh, Morris Strong did was the first thing is they used the definition of climate change established by the United Nations Environment Program, which says we're only going to look at human causes of climate change. Now, you can't possibly determine what effect humans are having, if any, unless you know how much nature is, is causing climate change. So by limiting that to IPCC with that definition alone, the second uh, important thing, and there's some other terms of reference, but the other one that's devastating is they, they put in what's called the summary for policymakers. Now, the, the, group, the group at CRU made sure that the scientists Scientists that were advising that summary for policymaker groups, which were mostly politicians, uh, were part of their CRU group. So people like Stephen Schneider, Michael Mann, Phil Jones. But the summary for policymakers, the, the rules of it are you write your science or technical report. Group, working group one, you set that aside, then the summary for policymaker groups will write a summary. The summary then is released to the media immediately, which of course, uh, and then it has all of the sensational stuff about, oh, the world's going to fry and this is going to happen. Then the summary goes back to the scientific group with the instructions to make sure that the scientific report says what we've already said in the summary and released to the public. So it's like, it's like a, uh, an executive doing a, a 
a summary and then telling the employees to find the facts to support the summary. It is that incredible and unbelievable. And if you want the, the details of that, I'm willing to share that with you of how Strong did this to control the whole process. And again, Maury Strong, an admitted eugenicist. We could play YouTube clip after YouTube clip of him on U.S. television 10 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, calling for forced one-child policies, 80% population reduction, drugging of water supply, everything that's in John P. Holdren's textbook, which was then adopted as policy. But I also want to talk, Tim, about the media blockade. How do we run that? And how do we bring these people to justice? Because they're not only engaged in fraud in these emails and the computer code where their weather models are designed for fraud in the programmer's own notes. We have the programmer's own notes. Uh, so we need to talk about that and criminal prosecution of these people for persecuting scientists like you.